Tom Ferry. Tom Panos in the house. How are you, brother? We are so pumped to have you here. I've got with me John McGrath, Troy Malcolm, my two co-hosts of the Million Dollar Agent podcast. But of course, we're here. We have got, probably John McGrath just said to me, 21 years of ARIC, probably in the top two or three consistent speakers um, over 21 years. And we're so pumped to have you back. We haven't had you back for a while. And I've got to tell you, Mr. Ferry, since we've had you, like, I don't know, maybe four or five years ago, you have become a rock star, not a real estate coach. You are a very difficult man to get a hold of. Life's well, been good for you? Life has been good, Tom, and I'm sorry because, uh, you know, I've, I've spent time with John. I've spent time with you. I have tremendous respect and appreciation and gratitude because you guys were the first to bring me to Australia. Uh, because of that, I've been kind of all over the world, so I owe you a ton and need to make sure that anytime you reach out, we can talk instantaneously. So thank you. I, okay. Well, let me tell you, as you've said that, I've got uh, John and Troy and they're, they're saluting you. It's cross between a, a, a prayer and a Buddhist um, acknowledgement, but the bottom line is they love you. Everyone in Australia loves you. And one of the reasons why is you've got this unique ability. Sometimes with people from the USA, they find it difficult to understand the dynamics of the Australian market where yes. it is so focused on getting the listing. There's, you know, yes. commission cutting is a, is a major issue. Um, and, but more importantly, what I've known, but anyway, let's go into this because I think there's a small subset of people here that don't know too much about Tom Ferry. So what's the 60 second version for those of you here listening for the first time? What's the background? Sure. So uh, barely got through five high schools, kicked out of both parents' homes, was destined to be a salesperson first and foremost, uh, spent my first three years in sales, made 100,000 sales calls, made every possible mistake you can imagine. And from that, learned a lot of lessons, how to build rapport, how to bring value to people, how to not be a salesperson, but instead be of service. And, you know, basically parlayed that into a leadership role. And then one day got a chance to do a seminar and teach people what I was doing over the phone. And it's kind of been a 29 year run. I mean, today I'm very blessed. We have 165 business coaches. We coach people all over the world. I do have a fine and great appreciation for the way the Australian market works. It's not that dissimilar from all of my European clients that are ferociously focused on listings, very little buyer representation. And it's really about Tom mm -hmm. standing out because yeah. it's really not a sales thing. It's a, you, you don't have to sell somebody on buying a home. They don't want to buy a home or they don't. But what we do need to do is do a better job selling ourselves and our degrees of separation as to why they should choose us over somebody else. I've helped clients get $20 million listings at 6% commissions in the US. And I've helped people in uh, Munich, Germany that thought they could never take an exclusive listing and actually you know, help persuade and convince a client to do a, an exclusive listing at a 4% commission, which is an astronomical fee in Munich. So the reality is I'm a coach, I'm a sales guy, I'm a very happily married man. And I'm just stoked to be coming to Australia again. Okay, well, we're, we're stoked as well because we're so stoked that you're uh, the only person on the program that's got two sessions. We've got a session on day one and day two, and we're excited about that. And, you know, to be quite honest with you, based on the content that you've done previously, I mean, you've got this amazing combination of uh, – mixing up style with um with with substance you know because sometimes yeah. you listen to a speaker and you just feel incredible at the end of the session you think yeah. hey you don't actually learn anything but with you you feel incredible and then you look you've got four pages of notes you've got incredible yeah. scripts you've got incredible dialogues you've got checklist processes but the, the the thing i want to touch on with you tom is you spend a lot of time with the industry titans yes. right what are you most excited about right now what are you seeing there so I'm really glad you brought up commission cutting. Um, it, it doesn't matter where I am around the world, Tom, there is a transformation happening in the real estate industry. And anytime transformation happens, let's call it disruption, right? Whether that is a new brokerage model, a better discount solution, purple bricks, or whatever the next one is, what happens is the vast majority of people freak out and they stop working and they buy into the drama of, what if everybody discounts like crazy instead of what the great agents do is they say to themselves, look, there's going to be a segment of the market for discounters. 
there's going to be a segment of the market for batshit crazy individuals. I'm going to do a better job marketing what I do, my degrees of separation, how I serve and, and support clients. And I'm going to find the people at the right fees that work for me. I'm good for them. They're good for me. So what I'm excited about right now in real estate around the world, right? I just had um, the number one agent from Beverly Hills uh, in my office today. She's making $4 million a year in commissions. She wants to go to eight to 10. And you know, Tommy, like the same principles I'm going to be teaching, you know, over two days with all of you guys are the same things I'm going to be working on with her privately for her to be the one that everybody calls and says, I want you. Yeah. I get you. I want you. So that's what's happening. It's the rich and the rest right now. And that's in every, I don't care if you're in Perth or in Sydney, it's the rich and the rest and the very best are elevating their games and everybody else is concerned about discount commissions. Okay, gold. Tommy, there are people every day in Australia that are using the dialogue and scripts that, you know, through your YouTube channels or some of them are yes. coach. And I'd love yes. to, like, I know we've asked the audience, they'd love in this session if you can give yeah. us one of the scripts you wish every agent used, you know? So, first of all, you know, one of the things that I, I actually respect your marketplace more than the US market is everybody there, it's about being great and it's about taking listings and if you're taking a lot of listings you're going to be a very successful real estate agent um at the end of the day there are like if i could wave a magic wand there's three questions i want every single agent to have burned into their psyche so every person they meet i don't care where they are they're going to build some rapport which you know tommy you know we all know how to build rapport but we got to get to the point where we ask three questions gosh hey tom it's been great to see you what's going on we do all that kind of stuff and then i say tommy i gotta ask have you had any thoughts of selling? Have you had any thoughts of selling? Have you had right. any thoughts of selling? And, and you and I both know, it's not just the question. It's the physiology. It's the tonality. Because I could say, hey, have, have you had any thoughts of selling? And, and that's going to get a bad response. But if I ask enough people, have you had any thoughts of selling? And I do it in a genuine, authentic way. And then I listen. Because nobody does this. Oh, my God. I have been thinking about selling. They go like this you know, and that's when you know you got an opportunity. And by the way, some of them just go, no, we love our place. And then we always ask the second question. Well, are you living in your dream home now? I mean, Tommy, life is really short to not be living in your dream home. Are you living in your dream home now? It's such a simple question. But what it does psychologically is it creates a gap between where they are and where they fantasize they yeah. could be. And in that moment, you might just spark the motivation for them to start looking for another property, to take action and talk to you about selling their home, right? So I love that question. And what's fantastic is, you know, whether it's a client of mine, Josh Rubin, who was just named uh, the number one transaction agent in all of New York City, Manhattan, um, Josh asking people on the streets that question or in the subway or the gal I just met with from Beverly Hills you know, hanging out with Madonna and movie stars and, you know, she's one of those kind of agents. That's a simple, like, are you living in your dream home now? You're living but then in the dream last, home yeah. yeah, right? But the last one is, it's so important, especially if, and I know, like there's so many great agents that, that we work with and I've, I've met through you guys that we, we adopt this mindset of we are the fiduciary responsibility, like for our clients, like, I have got to serve my customers. I'm not just trying to get them to move, sell them another house, get them to buy another house. But instead, like I'm like their stockbroker and their real estate assets are the most expensive assets in many cases that they own. So one of the questions we love to ask is, Tommy, I got to know, like at what price would you become a seller? I'm not asking you to sell now, yeah. but as the market adjusts and fluctuates, I want to know when you have that sell order. Like what's that price for you? And I promise I'm not going to call you and say you should sell now unless we're somewhere near that price or over it. And it doesn't mean you have to sell. It just means it's my job to keep you informed. So that question, at what price would you become a seller? And you know what? Everybody's got a price. So, so, so Tommy, when you, um, by the way, fantastic, great questions. And I think, I mean, the, the best agents you must train or coach, they, they've got this incredible ability of saying things. They might say the same thing, Tom, but yeah. for some reason, um, where, where do you put that down to? Why do some people can say exactly the same word, but get a different response? 
I think it's intent. It's, it, it's intention. Like uh, I have this young guy in my office who's shadowing me from Honolulu today. His name is Devin and Devin will sell this year 50 transactions, his second full year in real estate. Um, when I asked him, what's important to you? Like, why are you selling homes? He's only 24 years old. And he said, look, between zero and 17, when I left Michigan and moved to Hawaii, my family and I had moved 18 times. And he's like, Tom, I don't want that for anyone. So when, when, when he, and I'm not probably not even expressing this with the right level of emotion. I mean, he and I were almost crying as he's telling me the story. Like when he calls someone to help them, he's thinking about his mom, his two sisters, the emotion that he went through, the hardship of moving and how that process was done. So when he calls and says, have you guys had any thoughts of selling? It's not just some sales guy going, hey man, I want a listing. He's yeah. really thinking about the intent. And I think that's what makes it special. The other thing is, and you know this, right? Because I've, I've watched your work and I'm, I love like all of your training and what you're doing. You get this. When you're not attached to the outcome, when you don't need a transaction, you put the client first in all of their desires before anything else. And you go deep with them and you find out what's really important, what matters, because you're not looking at a transaction. Does that make sense? Tommy, does it make sense? I've got to tell you, if there's one thing like uh, John McGrath, Troy Malcolm, who are next to me here, we do a, a weekly podcast, right? We only get uh, five people in the whole world listening to it. But regard, regardless, the, 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 the John, Tom, Tom Ferry's one. So we get four plus you, okay? Um, one of the things that we're all about, and it's a word that you uh, uh, created, uh, it's the, not in the dictionary, but it really sums up real estate and what not to do, and that is commission breath. You know, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, and what you're, what, what, what I think you're saying is, when the intent is there, and the words are there, there's no commission breath. When the intent yeah. is not there, and the words are there, there is commission breath. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Now, you know, my team and and you guys are working on all the different topics you guys want me to work on. But one of the things that would be fun, you know, at the conference, th I mean, this is something that we've dealt with, and even more so right now in the U.S. because there's the US, Europe, Australia, everywhere, there's so much disruption. And the market has been relatively good enough for the last few years that new companies are coming in the market with the only intent of driving customer demand through discounts. And what we're working on with our clients is basically simple strategies like stacking the cool, like showing them what a discount company does versus all the things that we do. And explain then, that, stacking the cool, because I didn't get it straight away. Explain that, yeah. stacking the cool. So um, I always use the simple example of like, if you've ever watched an infomercial on television, right? They'll say, but wait, if you act now, we'll also throw in this and this and this and this and this. Well, that's a, it's an old marketing concept called stacking the cool. So if the average agent, Tom, goes on a listing presentation, and, and let's be clear, everyone that's watching for the beginning to the beginning of time to the end of time, if you're in sales, you're always competing against somebody else, right? That's the first thing you got to get. So you always show up knowing there's competition out there. What I tell people is the average real estate professional shows up with the 11 things that they do to market a home, right? So we're going we're gonna to put it in the computer. It's going to be broadcast around the world. My office is going to know. We're going to do a broker tour. We're going to do a, a drone video. We're going to do professional photography, blah, 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 blah. Well, all of that stuff is just standard. What if I told you that we have clients today that have an 89-point checklist of all the different things they do in detail to expose the property to the highest number of agents and the highest number of qualified buyers in the marketplace? You simply have to ask yourself, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, you know, what do you want to do? This is what the average agent does. This is what the discounters do. We're going to do this entire list. That's when you're stacking the cool. Now, remember, this could be, you know, we're going to stage the property, right? This means we're going to, you know, we're going to clean out the, clean out the attic and make the, make the home look brand new. We're going to paint it. We're going to do, it could be anything on your list that was going to make you more competitive, but the great agents naturally and automatically stack the cool in their favor to make yeah. sure that the service offering is just so much greater on your end than it is for everybody else that when you say, and these are the fees associated, there's like this, oh, okay, I get it. And by the way, just heads up, commission, like, let me restate this. 
discounting has jumped the shark. You with me on this? Like, I know you guys are dealing with it, but you were dealing with it the first time I spoke at the Aaron Conference 18 years ago, right? Yeah. But you have to ask yourself, what percentage of the market are actually discounting versus not discounting? Then even deeper, what percentage of you walk in with the hallucination that they're going to ask so you start your presentation knowing that discount is going to come up even if it's not? Like, it's a psychology thing, Tom. I have yeah. clients that walk in and they get $20 million listings at 6% commission because they say, yes, you can hire a million different brokers. Matter of fact, Tom, if we lined up a thousand agents outside this door, within basically one or two basis points, everybody's going to tell you the same price and they're all going to do these 11 things. But these are the 89 things that we're going to do to get the home sold. And by the way, let me, if time permits, I'll, I'll show you guys how my client listed the uh, Playboy Mansion for $200 million at a full fee. $200 wow. million at a full fee, we call it the reverse engineer listing presentation, right? You, you, you use some of these tools, and let me tell you, the discounting conversation goes away. And now, if you really are paying attention, and I know a lot because there's so many great agents, right? If you're really paying attention, look at what Amazon's doing. Amazon has been raising prices for the last three years. They are no longer the cheapest place to go online. What they are is they have the best experience for the customer. So I know, you know, I know we've got to be mindful of our time here, yeah. but I would strongly recommend that everybody goes tonight to Google and you type in Amazon's um, uh, shareholder letters from Jeff Bezos. Yeah. So Tommy, every year he writes a letter to the shareholders for 21, 22 years. Every one of these letters talked about two things, make it as easy as possible for people to do business with us and have a ruthless intention to solve the pain points of the client's experience. One of the things I wanna talk about with you guys, and this is more advanced stuff, is to look at every part of the real estate transaction and ask yourself, why has it always been done like this? Why does the buyer always get upset? Why does the seller always get upset? What if we flipped it and reinvented how it's being done? And then you could charge whatever you want because we are in the experience economy. More and more dollars are flooding towards better experiences. There's always going to be a market for discounters, but buyers and sellers today, they want the rock star who makes this extraordinary and magical. And that's how you win. Go. Tommy, you're going to, are you going to be like commission cutting is, is something that I'd love you over the two days. You're going to touch on and expand. Yeah, sure. it. On it. Absolutely. Listen. Tommy, one of the other things about you is you're really big about the psychology of success. You're sort of like, you know, following your content, mindset for you is everything. Can I ask you, yes. what's one mindset technique you recommend? Um, I take my meds every day. <laughs> <laughs> so that's actually true. And it's not the meds you're thinking. It is a very simple acronym. I meditate, I exercise, I have a good diet, and I get proper sleep, right? Like, that's it, right? I look at, you know, you and John, right? Like, you guys get it. Like, real estate sales, being an entrepreneur, being a business owner, like, you basically wake up every day and you get punched in the face like 15 times if you're successful. Yeah. If you're not successful, you're just punching yourself in the face over the guilt <laughs> of the things you didn't do, right? So, so here's the thing, like, meditate or pray, right? Something that gets you aligned, right? A gratitude exercise, whatever it may be. Exercise. I started working out. I went from three days a week to five days a week. It was the greatest transformation over the last, like starting in November. I have more energy. I have more stamina. I'm more intense. I'm in better shape than I've ever been. That keeps you mentally tough, right? If you're carrying, I keep this with me all the time. This is five pounds of fat, Tom. Five pounds, right? Wow. You buy this way on Amazon, right? So I show so this to five, five pounds that, is what? Is that 10 kilos? Two, two kilos. Yeah. It's two kilos of that. Yeah. Two kilos, right? So I, like I say to clients, like if you got these all over your body, right? <laughs> you're going to be tired, man. Right? And by the way, it's a horrible visual. I take these to seminars and I throw them out in the audience. And everybody's like, oh my God, I got like 12 of those. Right? So, so exercise, but then diet, like you and I both know the standard, you know, the standard diet for real estate agents is like, like coffee, 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 four o'clock cheeseburger, coffee, coffee, alcohol, right? Like, and then they wonder why they're like emotionally all over the place. So look, I'm not going to get too much into that stuff, but I'm going to tell you that 
if you're not just taking care of yourself, it's really hard. Like if you're not taking care of you to go out and solve the problems and do what we do at a high level, the most, look at, I have a client of mine right now. Um, she, she turned 80 a couple weeks ago, 80, eight zero. She made $4 million last year in commissions, right? Her business has spiked over the last three years. And when we reflect on why, yes, she's got a team and yes, she's got great operations and she has world-class marketing and she is spectacular and bedazzling and all those things. But here's the difference. She's now, she's now dancing competitively three hours a day. At three o'clock, she shuts her real estate business down and she dances, Tom, competitively for three hours, six days a week. You with me on this? Now, here's what's great. She's managing her time more effectively. She will tell clients, gosh, I can't meet at three o'clock. I have an appointment. Did you want to meet at 1.30 or did you want to meet at 7.45? You know, She's managed her entire life around this. She's 80 years old. She is in the best shape of her life, making more money than she's ever made. She's taking care of herself. When you take care of yourself, you can take care of more clients. When you don't take care of yourself, you suffer and you beg to try and take care of somebody else. So take your meds. Tommy, I've been watching, you've been pretty full on in fitness the last, uh, I would say 90 days on Insta story. Yep. Like, yes. you've, you've, uh, so, uh, so I follow you, you're 200, you've committed to 250 sessions, haven't you? Yes, yeah, 250 workout sessions, yep. Uh, and you're up to 51? No, I'm at, I, it's so funny because I just forget numbers all the time, like, but I think I'm at like 62 or 63 um, but I'm in the 60s now, and you know what's great? So first of all, thank you for bringing that up. And for everybody that's out there, if you're not connecting with me on Instagram, one of the things I'm going to talk about at Eric is the phenomenon of Instagram marketing, where the eyeballs are, where the intention is, and how you can create 14 to 15 stories a day to become the agent of choice, to become the one that they naturally call it and say, I choose you. Like, that's the game. So I also know when you make something public, when you create an accountability that's more than just you and your coach or you and your friends or you and your spouse, and you tell the world, this is what I'm doing, well, guess what? I have like 45,000 followers on Instagram. Everybody talks about it every time I see them. You know what that does? That takes my goal and massively aligns my behavior. There's no way I'm gonna miss, right? So for everybody watching, what is the most important discipline you need in your life for 2018 to make it your best year ever? Start an Instagram story and post it every single day. You do that, you're going to kill it. Tommy, can I ask you, um, Facebook, video, Insta, can you get listings um, out of that? Can you build business? Are you getting clients that are succeeding with those platforms? All right. So in 2007, when I launched my first YouTube channel, I thought this is going to be kind of cool. And I'm not sure, you know, Facebook, Friendster, MySpace, all that stuff. Um, by 2009, I went all in. Today, like if people ask me, like, could you, if you could wave a magic wand, what would you, like beyond like health and vitality for my family and loved ones and everyone that sells homes, I would say that you would authentically create content on a weekly basis yeah. using video. And not only will it get you listings, but what happens is, you know, you're doing your direct mail, you're making your phone calls, you got your word of mouth marketing. Now all of a sudden you got this anchor show once a week where you're talking about the market. You're like getting to know the local celebrities in your town, the school, the church, whatever, you know, like whatever, like, you know, your market. And what happens is after about a year, everywhere you go, people are like, Oh my God, that's not matters. Dude, I watch your stuff all the time. And now, so, so let me ask you, are we competing on every appointment? Are we competing? No. The answer is yes, right? If I can get any extra leg to get more listings, I'm going to do it. And by creating content on a weekly basis that provides value, that educates the consumers on the do's and don'ts and mistakes to avoid, why buying here versus over there and how to sell and why you shouldn't sell now, the agents that are doing that today, they're all saying the same thing. It's like a 15 to 20% boost in their business for free. So, so, what's, so, what's, so, the cost, what's the cost of a Facebook video? Free. So, 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 Tom, I, I mean, I talking to you now, I feel like I've already had a backstage view of your life because of these Insta stories. 
And sure. I think what, what you're saying is that this whole thing about winning a listing at the listing now has changed a little bit because everything you're doing is actually part of winning the, the business. I mean, um, it's you leaving leaving a buyer appointment at eight o'clock at night on an Insta story showing that you're a hard worker. It's you at the photo yes. shoot making sure that the detail's perfect, isn't it? Yes. It, look at it. If I, if I turned, you know, I'm actually in my office where I shoot the Tom Ferry show. If you actually turn, that's a dry erase board behind me. And I literally went like this. Hey guys, today I want to talk to you about this very complex transaction, a home that I recently listed and was able to sell in seven days at full price. And it was previously listed with two other agents for over a year and a half. Let me explain how I did it. And you map it all out and you put that on live on Facebook. Like that's bananas, man. Like it's case study marketing 101. It's you're able to visi visually demonstrate how you solve problems for people. You do that on video, Facebook Live, Instagram Live, Insta Stories. And by the way, little simple hack, every Instagram story you do, you don't say, hey, Instagram, because you can copy, paste, and put it right on your Facebook story and broadcast that one piece of content two ways. Go with me on this. Bring I'm going to talk about it. I'm actually going to give you guys while we're there, if you guys are up for it, I got to be mindful of how much I commit to, but I would love to show this is the ideal month of what you should be doing from a content creation standpoint. And Tommy, you and I both know, not everybody's going to do it because there's a whole bunch of, oh, video, what if my hair's, you know, wrong? And, uh, and I'm going to go, look, your clients know what you look like. You're not going to freak <laughs> anybody out. <laughs> Right? So like we live in a totally transparent world. People, people want to fall in love with you before they get to know you. And that's what all this video stuff does. You get the yes before you show up. But what's even cooler is like the ones that don't like your content don't call you and they don't waste your time. So you don't have to meet them to discover you don't like each other. It's a time saver. <laughs> Hey, so Tommy, is the best way to people to get, to, to get a hold of you in the meantime before they see you in Australia in person is through Insta or Facebook or YouTube or all those? The answer is yes, because uh, you guys will see if you ever go to my YouTube channel or my Facebook page or my Insta or Twitter. Um, no, like if you ask a, a technical customer service question, where do I find the, my team would go on there and respond. But I respond to everything. Like that's all me and you, like, you know it. Cause sometimes I just yeah. talk in like emojis and hearts and like the little yeah. poop emoji. Um, but you know, connect with me on Twitter, whatever your platform. But I gotta tell you right now, like Instagram is piping hot. Like I'm close to the people at Facebook that run the entire real estate division. I'm, I'm advising for them. You know, we invest a hundred thousand dollars a month in Facebook. Like I understand the power of that. And even my Facebook guys, like they literally say to me, Tom, all the action is on Instagram. Okay, well, listen, Tommy, I just feel, just even talking to you today, I think the value that you've provided this is incredible. Um, Susan and Nicola are going to put in the comment section the link to actually get an ARIC ticket. It's uh, aricconference.com.au, but it's actually in the link. Um, I can tell you, I think people are going to get a return of their investment just on your two sessions. That doesn't, doesn't include the other, how many, Johnny? Is it 20, another? 32 speakers. 32 speakers. I actually can tell you, just little, like to be honest with you, just those six or seven nuggets of dialogue, of video, social, and mindset techniques. Um, you understand what Australia and New Zealand need. We are so looking forward to having you. For those of you that haven't booked your ticket yet, if you go to the link under the comment section, you're going to get a taste of Tom Ferry. Uh, brother, it is so good to have you here live this morning here on a short week in Sydney due to uh, Easter. It's morning here. It's afternoon where you are. Is it, Tommy? Yes. Yeah, yeah about, uh, about 4.30 my time. Okay, much, with much love from Troy and John, we look forward to uh, seeing you. Um, guys and girls, um, you'll see a Tom in person both days at ARIC. Brother, love you so much. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Appreciate all of you, and uh, best of luck, and I'll see you guys in a few weeks. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye-bye.